saved, man, I just couldn't do enough good to earn salvation. Could you? This verse says, and for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God. That verse says that you can't do enough good, right? You're saved by grace, by God's amazing grace, through faith. You couldn't do enough to earn your way. It goes on to say, not as a result of works, lest any man should boast. If you could do it, you would be boasting, right? <laughs> I would be boasting. We'd all be boasting. Look how good I am. But it's not about how good we are, is it? It's about how good he is. Amen. It's about his grace extended towards us. We just described who we were, and it wasn't a pretty sight, was it? <laughs> we just described our heart's condition, but his amazing grace took care of our heart's condition. It wasn't something we could do. It wasn't something we could earn. It wasn't something we could buy. All the riches in the world would not be enough to buy his grace and his forgiveness. You couldn't buy it anyway because it's a gift, freely given by our Lord and Savior. It'd be like having a box here, nice big box, all decked out with a ribbon on top. And guess what? Oh, look here. Here's a name. It's your name on this box, this gift, bought by somebody who loved you, sacrificially they gave of themselves to, in order to buy it. You didn't deserve it. Yeah, you and God know that. You didn't deserve it. And yet it's there for you. Are you willing to accept it? That's our small part in salvation. God did everything for us. Jesus Christ made it all possible our small part is to receive what he is offering to us, this gift of salvation. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That gift is available. You can't buy it. You can't earn it. There's no way, according to this passage of scripture, there's no way that you can gain it for yourself. Only receive it. For by grace through faith, can you have that gift in your life? And it's available to you. Isn't that good news? It's amazing grace because there's no way we could have gotten this position by ourselves. There's no way we could have gotten right with God by ourselves. It's only by His grace that He offers us that opportunity. Say you have done that. This verse 10 is for you. Oftentimes we quote verses 8 and 9. And sometimes we leave out, oftentimes we leave out verse 10. Verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. What verses 8 and 9 say is that you cannot possibly earn, you cannot possibly do enough good uh, in order to gain salvation. Right? Not as a result of works lest any man should boast. There's nothing we could do to earn salvation. But if you are saved, your life will be different. You were created unto good works, that you should walk in them. If you are saved, there'll be a difference and evidence in your life. How can you show the amazing grace of God as a trophy of his grace if there's not a difference in you? But Romans, uh, I'm sorry, Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, that if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Are they new in you? If they're new in you, that means you have a new nature. And out of that new nature, you're going to do different stuff. Right? What's the kind of stuff you're going to do? Well, when God says, thou shalt not, you don't do it. And when God says, thou shalt, you're first in line. <laughs> You're going to do it, whatever it is. Those sins of, and those trespasses and sins are no longer the ruling force in your life. You may be guilty once in a while of failing to follow God, but as a rule of life, you're seeking to do what God wants you to do and to be what God wants you to be. Amen? Amen. That's the good works it describes. Some say that there's a great difference between James who says, uh, you say you have faith, let me show you my faith by my works. And Paul, who says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves a gift of God. There's no difference. Because Paul goes on to say, 
if you are saved, you're going to show it by the life you live. So I would say that may be a test for us today. Are you saved? Do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because if you are saved, he's put a new nature in you. You may have put it down for a long time. But man, it's time to let it come to the top again. That new nature that God has put in you. To let it be in charge of your life so that you can walk in good works. You can live a good life. And as you live a good life, you'll make a difference for you and you'll make a difference in others' lives too. Because they'll wonder, why in the world you're so different? Why are you different than everybody else? Because of God's amazing grace. Amen? Because of God's amazing, not because of you, not because of me, but because of God's amazing grace. How wonderful he is to us. Would you bow with me please in prayer? Father, we thank you for your amazing grace. Lord, we know that we don't deserve, could not earn, could not pay for, an ounce of your forgiveness. And yet, Lord, you have chosen to forgive us because of your great love towards us. Because of your wonderful mercy in our lives. Father, I pray that we would understand what it means to be forgiven of our sins. If we've never accepted you as Lord and Savior, Father, that this would be the day and the hour that we would seek your forgiveness. Lord, if we have accepted you as Lord and Savior, Lord, may this be the time that we recommit our lives to living those an amazing grace kind of life so that we can illustrate by our lives what it means to be forgiven and accepted by you. Lord, I pray that your amazing grace would just fill this place today. And Lord, there would be differences in our lives and hearts because we've been here in your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you all please stand?